Welcome to the third lecture of week four. So as as we talked about in the last lecture, this in this part of the lecture we will go uh, into a little bit complicated uh, aspect of pricing assets and generally uh, intertemporal decision making uh, in, under uncertainty. Now most of us know that uncertainty is the rea uh, reality of the life, uh, and so if someone asks you to list what is uncertain in economic systems, uh, here following would be a representative list. For example, tomorrow's prices. We do not know what a gas price would be tomorrow. Uh, future wealth, uh, future availability of commodities. You like a shirt, you didn't buy it today, you do not know whether it's going to be available tomorrow. Present and future actions of other people. So uncertainty is pervasive. However, that doesn't mean that we cannot make decisions under uncertainty. We have to figure out a way of dealing with uncertainty. One of the way people deal with uncertainty, for example, is that they buy insurance. So you buy auto insurance, you buy life insurance, there is also healthcare insurance and so on. Or sometimes you create a portfolio of contingent consumption goods. Now contingent means uh, dependent on certain circumstances. So what would these circumstances be? So let's think of it uh, more systematically. Let's say that you want to buy uh, an auto insurance. How much auto insurance should you buy? Now this decision involves two things. One is how much auto insurance you could buy, which is the question of affordability. And the second is how much auto insurance uh, would you prefer? That's a question of preferences. Now here the preference is not, uh, preferences are not on the level of auto insurance, but the preferences are basically on the possible states of nature. So if you're talking about driving a car, there are two possible states of nature that we could think of. One is that there is a car accident and other is a no car accident. So we want your preferences uh, on these states of nature. To start with, let's figure out how we can represent affordability of a, uh, of a state contingent consumption plan given these two states of nature. Let's say that accident occurs with probability pi a and it does not with probability pi n a. Of course, uh, they are exhaustive events, so pi a plus pi n a is going to be equal to 1. Let's say that the loss uh, that is caused by the accident is dollar l. So contingencies. An insurance contract is basically a contract that is implemented only when a particular state of nature occurs and therefore is state contingent. Example, the insurer pays only if there is an accident. So a contract implemented only when a particular state of nature occurs is state contingent. A state contingent consumption plan is implemented only when a particular state of nature occurs. Uh, this plan could be even more general. It may not be about insurance. Example, take a vacation only if there is no accident. Let's assume that uh, each dollar one of accident insurance costs you uh, gamma. Consumer, uh, let's say, has M dollars of wealth. Uh, CNA is the consumption value in the non-accident state and CA is the consumption value in the accident state. So let's look at how uh, we can figure out uh, the question of representing affordability of uh, different combinations uh, of consumption in a non-accident state and a consumption in an accident state. So for example, look at this particular plan. 
it's a state contention consumption uh, with seventeen dollars uh, consumption value in accident state and twenty dollars consumption value in the no accident state. Let's think about it more generally. So without insurance, what would be your consumption in different states? Without insurance, you would consume uh, whatever the total dollar income that you have minus the loss when accident occurs. That would be the total consumption that you could have. If there is no accident, then of course you have all of the M available to you to spend on consumption goods. This is what we call as the endowment bundle. Okay, and uh, it basically tells you uh, what would be the point uh, where you would consume if you just decide to abide by the consumption limits that are given to you according to the states. Now let's say that you buy K dollars of accident insurance. So now what is going to be the value of your consumption in different states? If you do not have any accident, you still pay the premium. So if gamma is the cost of $1 of insurance, then K dollars of insurance will cost you gamma K. And that would be an expenditure, so it would be subtracted from your total available dollar income M. On the other hand, if uh, uh, there is an accident, then of course, you are paying a premium anyways, so that is minus gamma k here. But when you have an accident, you have you experience a loss, which is L dollars, as stated previously. But now, because you have insurance, and, and an insurance is a state contingent plan, it pays you k amount of insurance uh, back. So your consumption in accident state is going to be M minus L plus uh, the net of what you pay for the insurance. So what you pay for the insurance plus uh, or subtracted from uh, the amount of uh, insurance that you will get if there was an accident. Now, it is simple. These both equations here have K in common. And so one way of uh, getting a budget constraint which has both C and A and C A terms is to solve for the common variable. So let's solve this equation for K and that would come to C A minus M plus L divided by 1 minus gamma. It is simple algebra. You should certain that uh, you follow the steps and you get to this uh, result. So now what I'm going to do is substitute k uh, here in the first equation, which gives me m minus gamma into this whole term here, right? When I solve for c and a, this is a neat equation that I get. So here, m minus gamma l divided by 1 minus gamma is the intercept, and gamma by 1 minus gamma, which is the multiplicand of c a, is going to be the slope of the line. So here is your endowment bundle on the slope of the line. And here is the budget constraint that you just derived, uh, which tells you what is the affordable consumption bundle uh, when you have uh, these two states of nature and uh, given the cost of insurance and available dollar income and the, exp uh, and the loss uh, that uh, you experience when an accident occurs. The slope of the line, as you guessed, is minus gamma by 1 minus gamma. It's this multiplicand here because this is the y variable, this is the x variable. The coefficient of the x variable is the slope of the budget constraint. Now the question is, we figured out the budget constraint. Where is the most preferred state contingent consumption plan? Before we go there, you need to complete uh, quiz 3 so that uh, you make sure that you are following the concepts. Thank you.